nomine Patris et et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Uh, for today's Mass, I would like to speak about St. Martin de Porres. He is uh, not in the traditional calendar, but on the new calendar, but uh, a saint is a saint, right? Regardless of whatever calendar he's on, and this is his feast day uh, after, I think it was, uh, it was John the 23rd um, in the year 62. 1962 is when he was canonized. So he didn't make it into our traditional calendar, but we will hear about him uh, nonetheless. So Martin de Porres, uh, he was born in 1579 in um, Peru, uh, illegitimate son of a Spanish nobleman and a freed uh, mother. She had been a slave. She was half African and half native Peruvian Indian. Uh, so he was not in a very good social place, right, right off from the bat. Uh, and in, on top of that, his father, um, uh, after his mother, he had one more uh, child, a sister, right? And then his father uh, abandoned him, right? He, his mother, and his sister, his father took off, and they lived in poverty. So his mother was forced to scrape by, living as best she could, uh, but he, and he was sent to a primary school uh, for two years, and then he was apprenticed to a barber who was also a surgeon. I guess they go together. If you've got a razor and you can cut hair, I guess you can cut skin too. So this surgeon barber, he was apprenticed to him and um, was there for, for a couple years. And during that time, uh, displayed remarkable piety. Even as an 11-year-old uh, young boy, he would spend uh, several hours each night in prayer. Uh, so quite remarkable. And he wanted to be a Dominican. Uh, but the, he was only, he was still a young boy. And furthermore, there was a problem. In, in that time, it was against Peruvian civil law for a, a descendant of either an African or a native Peruvian Indian to be a fully pr professed religious. I don't know why, but that's what it was. So it was, that was, that was um, this, um, was it unjust uh, a law of the state, right, prohibiting that. So, uh, but, so they couldn't accept him, or they wouldn't accept him as a, uh, as a member, but he, he begged them to accept him as just a volunteer. So they did. So they accepted him as a, uh, someone who would do uh, whatever tasks they gave him, uh, and they let him wear the habit. He could wear the habit. He lived in the cloister with the other monks, and he uh, just swept the floors. He did all these menial tasks. He did, did dishes. He worked in the kitchen, and he was perfectly happy, very happy to have joined the Dominicans. And... Um, he was exceptionally um, I was pious, exceptionally prayerful, exceptionally responsible. You get this, this 14, 15 year old kid, he grew up in poverty, his father abandoned him, society had laws against him, right? Racial laws against him. Uh, the, 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 very uh, a saint apropos for today, but he didn't get angry. He didn't like take it out. He didn't you know, be, become a criminal or, or start yelling about social justice or how he was treated. He, he turned it around, right? He turned it into sanctity. And he proved himself uh, so, uh, um, uh, I would say, um, such a model, such an example uh, of industry, of piety, of, of goodness, that after eight years, eight years as this volunteer, the prior couldn't stand it any longer, and he made him a professed monk. You know, regardless of what the laws said, he made him a monk. And uh, actually, there was two people, there were three people in the, in the there was 300 people in the, in the community, and three of them uh, disagreed. There was uh, one novice who said he was uh, um, uh, a mulatto, right? Uh, half black, half, and so he shouldn't be admitted. Another one was a priest, and he said, no, he was illegitimate, right? He was born of an illegitimate parents, he shouldn't be admitted. And then the third person who disagreed was St. Martin de Porres. And he said, I'm not worthy to become a member of the community. But the, the, the prior made him one anyways. Uh, and after that, um, he was uh, phenomenal in uh, serving the poor. He, he raised, at that time, the equivalent uh, $2,000 every week in begging, uh, giving to the poor. Uh, he would feed 160 poor people every day with food that he would, he would gather. Um, and at uh, one time, the, uh, the community was in debt and they needed to raise money. And so St. Martin de Porres said, I am just a poor slave, sell me uh, and raise funds. So that, that's crazy talk, but that just shows how uh, uh, humble, right, how much after Christ he was following. And uh, once uh, it was, um, he was, they said that he would be, they would, he would, uh, they would catch him uh, levitating at prayer. Uh, they would see from his cell uh, light radiating from his cell, right, from his deep contemplation. Uh, one time he um, experienced uh, um, in prayer, he was kneeling down on the steps of the altar, and it was, it was a wooden, kind of a wooden altar, 
and he was kneeling down before the Blessed Sacrament, and uh, one of the candles uh, lit it on fire. And so there's all this commotion, like the fire starts, and people are putting out the fire. He, he didn't move. He just stayed there praying. And they asked him afterwards, why didn't you move? There was a fire right there. He said, I didn't notice. Didn't even notice, right? Because he was so deep in prayer. So uh, miraculous, uh, um, uh, I would say, uh, with that uh, manifestation, right, of the, of the deep level of devotion he had to God. And he actually, he was a, a friend of St. Rose of Lima. And if you remember, she herself wanted to be a, a Dominican nun, but she, her parents wouldn't let her be a nun, so she wore the habit but lived in a cell outside of her parents' house. And so she had a similar problem with not being able to, to join the convent. So uh, the two of them became friends, and they would help and assist with the poor. And at one time, um, uh, St. Martin de Porres, he, he would take pe sick people in, and if there was no room in the monastery, he would put them in his own bed. And he was chastised for this and said that this, this, these beggars were filthy, and he said that uh, charity was more important than cleanliness. And another time, there was a plague that broke out in the city, and they took 60 um, of the community of 300, about 60 of the monks, and they put them in quarantine, which we all know now is not very enjoyable. Uh, they put them in quarantine, and they locked the doors so that, that they could, there could be no, no traffic from one side of the, of the community to the other, and so the sick monks had to care for each other as best as they could. Uh, well, the sick monks would report uh, Martin de Pours would be at their bedside assisting them. Like suddenly he would just be up here and be helping them, and he didn't have any keys. There was no way he could get through these locked doors to go assist the poor, and yet, uh, so he was. So they, they would, um, so reports about by going through locked doors, by location, and the prior forbid him from bringing any more sick persons into the, the monastery, and so he obeyed as best he could, until one time there was a, a poor person who had been injured, and it was at the point of, of dying, so he brought him in uh, to the monastery to, to, to save the person's life, and the prior told him that that was a, a sin of disobedience. And then Martin de Porres said, uh, forgive me, I didn't know that obedience was a greater law than charity. And which, which is, right, that, that charity is the greatest law. And so the, uh, the prior gave up at that point and said, you're right, you know, just follow, follow your inspirations of mercy. Uh, so a great, a great uh, example there of the love of Christ. Uh, so he did this. He did this for, uh, until he was 60 years old. Uh, he just continued, a poor, a poor professed monk, uh, helping the poor, raising that funds, caring for others, until he himself got sick, and he spent the last year of his life um, in, in great pain, uh, great physical pain, before he, uh, he died on the 3rd of November, today, and that would have been the year 16, uh, 1639. Uh, so... Uh, you know, what, like I said, what an example, right? Today is we, we see that the world is uh, just up in arms. There's these riots, there's, there's violence, there's fighting, there's hatred, and there's reverse racism, right? It's like if, if your skin is a certain color, either you are a victim or you're a racist. It has nothing to do with what you think or what you believe or what, what your actions are. It's simply the color of, this, of your skin is how people are being judged. And this is completely unjust, right? Uh, it, it's, it's, it's about what's on the inside, as St. Martin de Porres proves, right? It didn't, he didn't care what other people thought about him. All he cared about was the love of Christ, right? And, and any time anybody is accused of racism or accused of being racist or is it, whatever it is, I don't care. I want to follow Christ. That's who I want to follow. If, if you're going to call me a racist or if you're going to be racist against me, I'll just go over here and it'll be me and St. Martin de Porres and we'll be over here together. And like, we don't care what you think, right? We don't care. It is about Christ, it is about goodness, it is about virtue, right? That is who is, uh, we could say, um, um, that's who our family is, right? It's the saints, it, it's our Almighty God, it's the Blessed Virgin, and anybody else who realizes that, anybody else who is baptized, that's our family, right? That's the color of our skin, right? What's our skin color? Sanctity. That's what it is. And we need to, we need to tell people that, we need to show people that, and, 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 and realize that it's, it's the more essential, right? It's the soul that, that is, is, is more important than all, right? That's where the virtue lies, uh, sanctifying grace, and so on. Uh, so that's, that's we, we know this, right? Let us bring that to the world, bring this knowledge and this love to the world and help others to see uh, beyond that, right? Beyond anything else, politics, uh, 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 economics, whatever, uh, it's about sanctity, it's about love. And we can do that with the help of Almighty God, right? With His grace and the help of the saints. St. Martin de Porres, pray for us. God bless you all in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.